sit. Get stuck in traffic, okay. Hugo. <clears throat> Darling, I would like to introduce you to Puka and Stanza. Oh, how do you do? Puka, a very special lady in my life. Wanda Talbot. You look very, very familiar. Have you ever been to Miami? More often, Palm Beach. But I do get down to the Club La Bamba when I'm feeling funky. Uh, excuse me, uh, can I get you anything, Mr. Porto? I'm sure Wanda would cover some wine. Oh, yes, darling, that would be lovely. Thank you. Well, how about a nice, uh, nice corvo? It's uh, very dry, very smooth. It's pedestrian. How about a Chateau Lafitte, 82? <laughs> about $300 a bottle, Mr. Porto. But on the other hand, the... Uh, Whatever the lady great. wants. The lady gets... Three hundred bucks a bottle. All right, listen up, everybody. We don't hit this place till this guy pays his bill. You got that, everybody? Tonight, I have two reasons to celebrate. First, Puko and I have agreed to a marriage of the most powerful family in the United States and the most powerful cartel in Colombia. From this night forward, we are one. Yes, got him. And now, even a bigger surprise. Oh. Oh, what a, a lovely box. This must have cost you a fortune. Oh, no, darling, please, open it up. The real surprise is inside. You know what I'm asking. This moment, I'm the happiest man on earth. You are a dead woman. Oh, man! Pull the plug. Let's roll, let's roll. You promised me you wouldn't be in any trouble. Do you remember that? Give me that. We got our own way of handling witnesses. Yeah, and so do we. You don't move, you stay, you stay right there. Put the gun away, we'll never see trial. Yeah, because I'm not going to be here. Don't move. You and a girl won't live to see Christmas. You're shaking. Why don't you take my coat? Get your stinking police pig coat away from me, you creep. Hey, nobody said that you had to make this guy fall in love with you. I mean, things just got away from us for a minute, that's all. For a minute? A guy who can buy and sell Brooklyn just made snuffing me out his life's work. What are you talking about? I have a life out there in real places with real people. Rio, Saint-Tropez, Monte Carlo. I am not sticking around here. I cannot afford to spend two months waiting for some dumb trial. Are you call moving from town to town, pulling your little con games. You call that a life? Won't be two months. See there. No, with Fortuno's lawyers, it could be more like a couple of years. What? Yeah. Oh, but we think the Justice Department is going to let us slip you into the witness protection program. Witness protection? No way. I am doing Rio the day after tomorrow, and I'm going to be there. You volunteered to cooperate, and we got it in writing. Yeah, right. We got that choice. It was either that or doing 5 to 10 and 11 work if I didn't. Hey, Wanda, we arrested you fair and square. Now, helping us out with this operation, that's a fair exchange. No, you set me up in a dirty buff to rope me into helping you nail Fortuno. Well, I did my part, now you do yours! You are telling me that for risking my life and helping you, I am now some kind of prisoner? Wanda, will you calm down? Huh? Will you please just calm down? I mean, it isn't going to be all bad. No, no, I am not fighting out of some yogel town where I don't know nobody, not in a million years. You'll know somebody. You know Joey. What? Joey, even if they weren't looking for you, somebody's got to stick with her to keep her alive and to keep her from running. That somebody is you. Well, no, no. Absolutely not. No, not in a million, billion years. Especially not with a common criminal like her. Common? You calling me common? You have the breeding of an egg-sucking ferret. Egg-sucking what? You're all right, all right, all right, all right. Knock it off, both of It's not going to be all bad. As a matter of fact, 
I got some good news for you. Yeah, what? He's dying and he only has two weeks to live? Even better. Palm Springs, California. Yeah, what about it? An old friend, a former federal marshal, runs a security company down there. Now, occasionally helps us out by putting a witness on his payroll. Doing what? I'm a cop. That's what I do. Yeah, and doing Rio during Carnival is what I do. Well, you're both gonna have to make an adjustment, aren't you? Because otherwise, she's as good as dead. Give me the keys to your apartment. For what? Because the department needs to collect the jewels and the furs that it's loaned to you from the police inventory. I'll give them to Sergeant Haney. I wouldn't want your hands touching my private things. You can also give Sergeant Haney your set of keys to the fancy sports car. Hey, Wanda. Right now, Fortuno's hung up with his own arraignment, but that could all change by morning. So you do exactly what Sergeant Haney tells you to do, and you'll stay alive. Understood? Understood. Good. You'll stay outside your hotel room for the rest of the night, and I'll pick you up in the morning. I think that was a little too easy. Anybody got any money for two questions? <laughs> hey! What did you do, Wanda? Knock over half of Fifth Avenue? Hey, I'll take 30000 for the works. You want to wait till the bank opens, I can give you thirty. At this hour, it's fifteen. Deal. It's all right, Cappy. I'm sure it's for me. You the lady with the NSX? It's all right. It's with me. It's got 82 miles on the speedometer. They sell for 30,000 over book, and the book's 60. That makes 90. I'll take... I'll take 40. I'll give you 30. Done. Where can I pick it up? In the lot on the south corner of 46th and 5th. Uh-huh. Wait a minute. That's the parking lot of the Midtown Police Station. What do you expect for 60,000 on the market? A warranty? Hey, I'm sure that's Ned. I'll get it. She's in there. Yep. Nice bathrobe. <laughs> Most unusual. It's a good likeness. Yes, yeah, the blue of Hollywood. There's all my passport photos. Yeah, it's 5,000 on account of the rush. You know, you might consider a new photo for the file. You look a little older than this one. That crack just costs you a thousand. Don't you forget something? <laughs> one airline ticket, first class. All you gotta do is show up. One ticket to Rio. <laughs> you don't have mountains like this in Jersey. Look at all these open spaces. Yeah, between your ears. Hey, you know that brochure on the plane? It says they got more golf holes here than they got bus stops. And more heat than hell. Give me snow on the roof and a nice cozy fire. Hey, you can forget about fireplaces, huh? Because until they nail Fortuno, your life is gonna be nothing but clean living and swimming pools. Swimming pools turn my hair green. Excuse me, will you come with me, please? Yeah, sure. Welcome to Palm Springs. I'm Matthew Durning. I'm Wanda Calvert. No, you're Danielle Powell. You want to step inside, Miss Powell? Here. Watch your head, please. Inside those packets, you'll find complete details of your new backgrounds. I want you to memorize them. 
As soon as we put you through the program, you'll get your new driver's license, your birth certificate, your social security card, and your PSI ID. PS what? PSI, Palm Security and Investigations. That's me, your new employer. Hey, is this absolutely necessary? Only if you want to stay alive. We're going to change everything about you, too. Your image, for instance, is going to have to be westernized. <laughs> you think you can turn this jerk from Jersey into Roy Rogers? This, I gotta stay. Hey, I was born Joey Pachorik. I'm gonna stay Joey Pachorik. Well, you'll live a lot longer as Cody Powell. First thing we have to do, Cody, is get rid of that cruiser hairdo. Cruiser? <laughs> How about a, a nice crew cut? Hey, if I get a vote here, you're gonna be able to pull gigs for Sinead O'Connor. I guess you two are gonna make for a very happy marriage. Marriage? Marriage? Hey, didn't anybody tell you? What? From now on, until you two are out of danger, you'll be living as husband and wife. Congratulations. I wish that I could write you a letter Cause sometimes I don't know what to say I wish that you could write me a letter Cause that would mean that you're far away Let's try to work together Cause it looks like we're stuck I'd rather lick the oil off an old diesel truck I'd sign it sincerely I'd hate it severely I know that's just your way to say Yes, I love you Now, the $26 million winning ticket is still missing. That's right. According to the state computer, one of you party animals doing the Palm Springs trip stopped into a mini market for some brew and chips and scored the big one. But for some reason, you haven't turned the ticket in. Check your pockets. Find the ticket. Or check the pockets of a loved one. Okay, now think back. Where and who were you with two weekends ago on Palm Springs? Huh? Here are the numbers again on that missing ticket. Okay. Just make them up. All right, 7, 9, 11, 19, 40, 66, and your bonus number 12. Sound the familiar? <coughs> we'll be your friends. We'll be your friends for life. Sure, it kind of depends on Pac. Pac? Well, what the hell does he have to do with this? Well, we sort of bought the ticket together. I picked the numbers, though. It's our birthdays, but he's got the ticket. What is it? Pac, I have got the greatest news. What the hell are you doing calling me here? Mitzi's not more than 30 feet away. No, listen, when you hear what happened, you won't care. What? We won the lottery! I mean, the grand prize bag! Twenty-six million dollars! Pat, did you hear what I just said? I heard you. Aren't you just the heaviest man in the planet? That goes without saying. Paco, what on earth are you doing out here when you're supposed to give a speech any minute? Uh, let me get back to you on this, uh, Sam, as fast as I can, uh, just to discuss our next move, I mean. Well, if you mean cashing in the ticket pack, I don't have it. You do. 
I'll get back to you as fast as I can, Sam. Just sit tight. Who are you talking to? Sam. Sam's in the banquet room in the first row. Not that, Sam. Come on, I have a speech to give, and you're completely ruining my train of thought. Sweet home. You can't walk in this town without falling into a beautiful swimming pool, and you picked this place? Yeah, well, it was chosen for privacy. This is well off the beaten path. Yeah, unless you're smuggling aliens. Yes, you I have a standing suite at the London Hill. You expect me to live in a hole like this? Well, it's much bigger on the inside. Well, that makes a lot of sense. This is the bedroom? I know exactly what you're thinking. <laughs> you ain't got a clue what I'm thinking. Or you'd be wearing a steel jock. Naturally, the U.S. government couldn't sanction two unmarried people sleeping together, so I, I came up with that. I thought it was an interesting idea. Split shifts. You work days, Cody nights. Hey, come up with another idea, right? Nights is for rookies. I got 12 years in the force. Well, I suppose she could work nights. What about it? You got a problem with that? <laughs> yeah, one. What's all this crap about work? Look, let me explain something to you people. You see, the witness protection program was designed to help people stay alive, not freeload on the taxpayers. You'll be picked up tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. sharp for your indoctrination. Whoa, 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 whoa. I am not sleeping in the same room as this clod. You go back to New York? you for the bed. Oh, how very nice of you. This is the least I can do. Wait, 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 wait a minute. We'll use my coin. Heads. Not a week goes by that this hotel doesn't play host to at least one world leader or ex-U.S. president. And we do all their security. In return, they provide home offices and facilities for our operation. Today, the average police department throughout the country is underpaid and understaffed. Some places, they amount to little more than a social service for breaking up domestic quarrels, separating the haves from the have-nots. See, more and more people are being forced to reach out for private protection against crime, which is where we come in. Day or night, anybody in trouble can get 24-hour help by dialing our hotline, P-S-I-L-U-V-U. -U. See, if your home is burglarized, you got about one in 10,000 chances of recovering your goods. If it's a stolen car, one in 1,000. And if it's a homicide, unless it's a relative found standing over the victim with a smoking gun, about one in 100. And here we have round-the-clock video surveillance. Palm Desert Mall, restaurants, hotels, live feeds from our Skywatch helicopter units. In short, when it comes to protecting your person, your property, or your loved ones, the future is right here in this room. Yeah, well, I think it's normal for a cop of your experience to resent the concept of private police. In time, you'll develop a real sense of appreciation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's go get you a set of wheels and a uniform. A uniform? Where is this? Palm Desert Mall. You know your stuff. I beg your pardon? <gasps> That pickpocket you just found has been driving us crazy. If you're talking about this guy, it looks like he's a little down on his luck. He's a cop. Undercover. Used to work with my father. Oh. Thanks for not letting me make a fool of myself. I'm here to help. <sighs> Come on, I'm uh, supposed to show you the ropes. They'll be starting you off at the reception desk where your job will be sending people to the appropriate departments for help. Oh, my God. Wait, don't look. Is that Robert Wagner? He's one of my all-time favorites. He calls in this low, breathy voice at 3 o'clock in the morning. I wouldn't be so upset if he asked for Jill, but he always asks for me. 
Robert, I think we better talk about this in my office. Hello. Hello. See a client? Of course. Hmm. That's a four thousand dollar suit, shirt one fifty, shoes I'd say five hundred, watch another six thousand. <laughs> Wow. You know, a talent like that could come in very handy in this job. I was just thinking the same thing. <laughs> Don't you look cute. <laughs> Mr. Packer, Carol Mallory insists on speaking to you. She's on line two. Mrs. Packer's on line one. Darling, I'm so glad you called. Secretary already told me about your emergency trip. A small crisis. It won't take me more than a day to handle it. If you're not back for our ski party after all your promises... Well, you know how much I hate California. I'll be in and out. I promise. Hello? Pack? Darling, I'm so glad you called. I wanted to explain why I was so abrupt. I always understand, Pack. I am just so happy that after we cash this ticket, you are not going to have to worry about Mitzi or her father's money anymore. Do you have any idea where the ticket is? It's somewhere in your house, but I'm not going to feel safe until I have it in my hands. You do understand I'll have to be the one to turn it in. Our names can't be linked before I've had a chance to work things out. What's there to work out? I'll explain it all to you when I get there in a couple of days. We'll find the ticket and spend the rest of the weekend in bed. Celebrating twenty-six million dollars. Okay. <sighs> okay. I love you back. Me too. Don't even say it. <laughs> oh, cheer up. Look, it's not my fault. You look like a boy scout. <laughs> hey, look. Don't think I don't see through your jovial, good-natured crap. I saw the way you're checking out that client list. You so much as think of running one of your little con games around here, I'm gonna be right on your tail. PSI 5, PSI 5, copy. PSI 5, copy. 1340 Mountain View, burglary in progress. Copy. On the way. Hey, you go outward. I'm doing the day shift. You're dropping me off at the trailer, remember? Yeah, you said you wanted to mix it up with some grateful clients, right? Which grateful clients? Yeah, well, the Packer House is one of the richest. security guard.
I explained to Durning that this young girl got past both of us. Did you let her get away? Come on, we gotta arrive at some level of trust here if we're gonna survive this mess. Now, you don't come out of there, I'm coming in. One. Two. Well, you, you think because you're coming out there in that fancy little nightgown, you think that's going to take my mind off of what we're talking about? The girl broke into the Packer house. Had a look in her eyes I haven't seen since I was a little girl. And they came to arrest my father in Paris. I hid under the bed for three days till he came back. My only company was a small compact and a mirror my father gave me for my birthday. That's where I remember seeing the same look I saw in this girl's eyes. Maybe I did let her go. You took the sofa last night. The least I could do is take the sofa tonight. Good night, Cody. Cody, I want you in my office for a debriefing on the Packer break-in. You I went out at the reception desk. Hey, I was at the Packer house, too. Uh, yeah. Uh, look, let's get straight on our ists, shall we? Ists? You see, some of us are criminologists and some of us are receptionists. Now, be on the lookout for a Mrs. Fortney. What's a Mrs. Fortney? She's one of our house sitters. Uh, tell her that I'm going to move her from her present assignment into the Packer estate until Jack Packer gets here from Chicago. Okay, Cody? I think some of us are sexist pickets. Excuse me? Mm-hmm. You people do security for a house where my sister is sometimes a guest? So, what can I do for you? She didn't come back all night. Well, how old is she? Twenty-five. Prom night? No, she's been seeing an older man. Oh. An older married man. Oh. But he said he'd leave his wife. <laughs> I figured the whole affair would just fade. And then suddenly they win the lottery together. What, a hundred bucks? Twenty-six million? You're in luck. Why don't you just have a seat right here? I am going to take care of you personally. Now, about this lottery ticket. Did your sister cash it? No, it's missing. What happened? Uh, to your sister. And this ticket. Well, she phoned, told me that she was in trouble, and that she would meet me at our apartment when I got off work. But when I got home, she was gone, and um, there was blood on the floor. Blood? That's why I'm afraid she could be dead. Why are these phones ringing off the hook? Where's Mrs. Powell? Uh, I'll find her. Yeah, you do that. I know we can help you. I don't have any money, Miss Powell, but I can offer half of my share of my sister's share of the lottery because um, she told me she was going to share it with me, and I would do anything to get her back alive. If Mr. Packer is the scoundrel you say he is, you and your sister should keep your shares. I'll take his. Ah, just the man we wanted to see. Vicki, this is Cody, one of my best operatives. We've just taken on her case. Danny, can I see you in the hallway for a minute? Excuse me. What do you think you're doing? You're supposed to be. Now it's your turn to listen. Vicky's sister Carol was the girl who broke into the Packer house last night. I don't care who her sister is. What, did she say she's going to turn her in? She can't. Her sister was kidnapped from their apartment. There were signs of a struggle. Blood. you got to work fast on this one, Cody. You can save her life. All right, I'll tell Darren right away. No, you can't do that. Why not? Because Durning represents the man Vicky thinks is behind her sister's kidnapping. Jack Packer. Why are you doing this to me? I mean, why are you doing this to you? I mean, what's in this for Wanda? Oh, don't talk to me with that cynical cop attitude. That girl over there is my kind of people, a working girl. I'm not going to let one of Durning's rich clients ruin her life. Now, if you are not going to investigate this kidnapping, I will do it alone. Hey, wait a minute. Wait. What do you know about investigating the scene of a crime?
Mrs. Fortney. Oh, well, thank goodness you've come. Please, sit down. I'm perfectly happy at the Denny House. They have such a lovely atrium. Mm. But if Mr. Durning needs me at this other place, uh, Packer, is it? Yes. Well, Mr. Durning would like someone living there because of the... the unspeakable situation. <laughs> unspeakable? Shh. They are bono of a time keeping the press from finding out about the... the double murder. Double what? Well, the fact that the Slasher's come back two nights in a row is what's got everyone so edgy. Slasher? Of course, he did leave that note vowing to kill anyone who spends the night, but what are the odds the guy has the nerve to come back a third time? Well, let me give you the address, Mrs. Fortney. Mrs. Fortney? Be ashamed of yourself. Wanda! <laughs> oh my god! Things can't be so bad that the best man in the world is looking at my That's where they are. Why don't we keep walking? How would you like a chance at a little good luck? Your father would be very impressed. What's the scam? A lottery ticket, Uncle Ray. It's someplace in this house, and we've got to find it. What's it worth? You'd be able to buy yourself a new life. <gasps> we could spend weeks searching a house this big. Mm. Unless... I know that look. Uncle Ray, we need manpower. Any of the old gang working the Springs this season? But just the Dodger and his crew. Working the old Vatican art scam. The Dodger's here? Yes, he just about laid down his life for you. What do you have in mind? Nothing, and don't tell him I'm here. Why not? He's nuts about you. Uncle Ray, I'm in some trouble. What kind of trouble? I sort of gotten mixed up with the wrong crowd. The police. Honey, other than your father, you're the only person I've ever known who could wade up to her chin in water and stay dry. I got wet this time, Uncle Ray. You see, there's this man and... Oh, dear. We couldn't possibly mention another man to the Dodger with his temper. He'd want to kill him. No, you're right. We can't do that. We can't tell him. At least not right away. Uncle Ray, you just get him here. I'll know what to do. Well, what do I use for transport? Oh, anything you want. The Rolls, the Ferrari. The garage is full of them. Desert catering? You people come highly recommended by the owner of the house we're leasing for the season. Jack Packer. Yes, that's right. Well, I hope you don't mind doing things at the last minute because my husband just thrives on impulsive, extravagant parties. Tonight. Price is no object. At least I think that it means that Carol's still alive. Oh, Cody, I'm so frightened. What if he comes back? Well, I guess I can put you up in my place for a couple days until we get this... I don't know what I'd do without you and Danny. It's okay, it's okay. If we get my sister back alive, it'll be worth every cent of my share of the lottery ticket. Lottery ticket? One half of my sister's half. Twenty-six million dollars. That's right. 
Jack Packer suggested we call his honor the mayor because of the national press coverage we're expecting. Yes, Time Magazine will be here to do a piece on the Vatican's personal emissary, Cardinal Parsevali. Hello, is this Councilman Brady? Yes, I just got off the phone from the mayor. He suggested I give you a call. Where is Mrs. Powell? Oh, everybody's favorite question, including Mr. Durney. I'll tell him you're here. No! I'll get back to him. A lot of nice equipment here. Wouldn't have time to lecture spectrograph, would you? Need to know everything there is to know about this blood sample. Hey, look, I'm real. Let's get on this right away. Uh, I'm on special assignment. I know Mr. Durning would really appreciate it. Oh, okay. Jeez, I'm starting to think like her. All briefed and ready. Oh, widower. Widower, you are going to look divine. A temporary cash embarrassment makes it possible for me to offer you a Rembrandt hidden in the Vatican basement for over a century. No, Widower, not tonight. Tonight we are giving money away. Oh, <laughs> that'll be a change. Oh, uh, uh, hello. Oh, Sippy, now you understand you are going to be the major magazine photographer. I, I can handle it. <laughs> okay. No, no, Bailey's filled you in on the grift, so if there are no further questions. Wanda. No personal instruction. What could I possibly tell you that you don't already know? Well, I could think of a number of things. You're right, we got a lot to talk about. But not till after I change. Good luck, guys, and I do thank you. Blood type A? Yeah, that's good news. Oh, yeah, type A's always been one of my favorites, too. Paul, what do you think you're doing? You come into my organization, you disregard every piece of structure I've spent years building here. Now what are you up to? Try to save a woman's life. Yeah, well, you're too late. Because if I get my hands on Mrs. Powell, we're not going to have to wait for the mafia. I'm going to kill her myself. You want to tell me what kind of a woman it is takes pleasure in terrorizing the elderly? It's funny. I thought it was just me she liked to terrorize. I'm not laughing, Powell. A woman, a very kind, nice old lady who's worked for me for years, calls me up raving about some slasher who's supposed to have taken refuge in the Packer house. The Packer house? And now I've lost my best sitter. You know what I'm good man to do? Send you out there to take her place. How would you like that? I would completely understand. Oh, you would? I'll get over there right away. <clears throat> Howell, what about this blood test? Oh, that was nothing, man. Uh, just, uh, <laughs> wasn't feeling very well, that's all. Have a good night, Mr. Durney. Just what do you want to know about his blood? Uh, he wanted to know if it was female. Very nice. Enjoy the party. Thank Steve Garvey. How good to Thanks. welcome you, Mr. Garvey. It's so good of you, indeed. Excuse me. Ticket, sir. Thank you very much. Please don't let this terrible thing be her idea. Before you get crazy, let me explain. There's not going to be any explanations. There's just going to be getting the hell out. Two minutes, that's all I ask. Two minutes? Two minutes? You can have a water buffalo speaking Russian. When you hear why I'm doing this, you're going to want to jump in like the great undercover cop you are. Oh, yes, thank you. Just rave on, rave on. It's not going to work this time, because I know why you're doing this. You think this is too dark? Forget the suit. I know about the $26 million lottery ticket. But then you also know that the lottery ticket is missing. You're damn right I know. Somebody just bashed my skull in looking for it at Vicky's place. Cody, that's excellent. You're a sick woman. What else have you learned? The blood on Vicky's carpet belongs to a man. Oh, probably her kidnapper. So he didn't get the ticket, which means Carol's still alive. You know, that may be the only thing that we agree on. But that's it. It stops right there. What do you think? Nice suit. I agree. It'll look great with your white boots. Hey, I'm not putting it on. It also means that whoever is looking for that ticket will undoubtedly turn up at the party. Now, how do you come to a conclusion like that? Well, he's got to be watching this place, and it'll be the easiest time to walk right in. Blue or pink? Blue. Hey, look, even if he did, how do you suggest that we pick him out in a crowd? Uh, that is your problem. You're the detective. Now, come on, get dressed. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, it 
It's a pleasure to meet you. I extend my personal welcome. My name is Bailey. Bailey, how are you? Okay, let's just go. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you dropped your wallet. Wallet? That is my wallet. Uh, watch. That's amazing. That's incredible. Penny suspenders. My suspenders. Is he available for fundraisers? It's re-election time, you know. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Why don't we go this way? I want you to meet Carter Parsavalli. Oh, yeah. oh, yes, and uh, the uh, Time Magazine photographer. What would he do? Ladies and gentlemen, my husband and I have so looked forward to meeting you all. We're especially pleased that so many of you who know Jack Packer could join us tonight to honor our very special guest, Cardinal Giuseppe Parsavalli. Before you get the idea that we are going to put the touch on any of you, let me put you at ease. Tonight, you all have an opportunity to receive rather than give. And as our national magazine photographer passes amongst us, we're going to ask you to participate in the fun of an old-fashioned scavenger hunt. I have hidden an object somewhere in the house. It may be very well concealed, or it may be right out in front of you in some unexpected place. My husband and I... Donate Did you say husband? Don't you know a con when you see one? To Cardinal Parsevalli's Order of the Good Works. What are we looking for? A lottery ticket whose numbers are known only by my husband and myself. Just in case any of you has a pocket full of them. <laughs> okay, any more questions? What if my favorite charity is my own bank account? <laughs> That's okay too, Mr. Yoko. <laughs> Ready or not, go find the ticket. How long do you intend on ducking me? Oh, Dodger, I've got a lot on my mind. What about me? Yes, you're on there too. Your Eminence, this is just not the time. You might try looking in the West Wing. Uncle Ray. Ah, Danny, you were wonderful. Never better. No, Uncle Ray, I am in big trouble. Have you seen the look in Dodger's eyes? I don't know how much longer I can duck him. I'm afraid he's still in love with me, and you remember what he did to that poor guy in London. Yes, he's still in hospital. But they tell me he's coming along nicely able to identify some sounds and colorful objects. All I did was let him taste one bite of my recipe for Yorkshire pudding. But somehow Dodger seemed to view that as a very sacred and personal act. Can you imagine what he'd do to a man he thought I was sleeping with? Are you and Cody sleeping together? Oh, don't be ridiculous. Besides, I loathe him. Good. Then remember the advice that your father always used to give you when you were a little girl. If in doubt, tell the truth. <laughs> On the other hand, who would believe it? Oh, we are living together in a tiny trailer. Ah, that's different. Then, of course, you must lie like hell. You know, as much as I hate to admit this, this is just crazy enough to work. Yeah, well, before you break out the champagne, Cody, uh, there's a problem. Hey. Don't worry, we'll handle it together. No, no, we can't handle this together. I gotta handle this. You see, there's this guy I know who's got this terrible, terrible temper. Wow. Terrible, terrible temper is a terrible thing. Yeah, especially when he's got this thing for me. Well, you know, in a certain light, uh, when you're behaving yourself, you are almost attractive. <laughs> Cody, I am dead serious. This guy once met a man in a London hospital just for tasting my food. Yeah, it was London. This is Palm Springs. What's the chances of running into the guy? You haven't introduced us. Oh, uh, Monsignor Savani, this is Cody, my Husband. dear... Don't get too comfortable in the role. Oh, this is uh, much more than a role, Monsignor. He's joking, isn't he? Well, yes, no, actually... Oh, sir, this is my little woman. <laughs> uh, darling, please, I don't think this is the time or the place. Hey, what are you talking about? Priests are nuts about vows. What's he saying? Tell him, sweetheart, tell him that we're living together as man and wife. Uh, uh, no, we're living together as man and wife. I swept her right off her feet. 
Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, oh that's stupid. Now look what you've done. He thinks we're involved. No, he thinks we're married. I mean, I would think that would be right at the top of the priest's wish list. No, this is not going to work between us. First, you almost get me killed in New York. Now you make jokes in front of the most dangerous man in my... No, I take that back. You are the most dangerous man in my life because you are stupid. Where are you going? To go and convince Dodger that I haven't let you taste my Yorkshire pudding. Yorkshire pudding? Who the hell's that got to do with anything? said all we have to until this night is over. Yeah, well, more than the night may be over. Why? You look like you just saw a ghost. Yeah, maybe two. You and me. I just saw this guy in the hallway. He's a professional killer. His name is Walrod. How do you know that? Because I staked out Kennedy Airport for two weeks waiting for this guy to slip back into the country about a year ago. And believe me, if the mob hired this guy to follow us, they're paying him top dollar and we're getting out of here. All right, Cody, we can't just walk out on our plan. I've got a safety net. Just give me a few minutes and I... I'm looking for Jack back. You are? He moved. We're leasing his house. I'll just stick around for a while. I'll see if he shows. Well, that could be uh, quite a long time. <laughs> He's in Chicago. Uh, but if you'd like to leave a number... We'll just we can, tell him uh... you stop by. I'll wait. He's not here for us. Yeah, He's but here why is the guy, guy that is trying to, trying to kill us talking to the guy that we're trying to nail? He's here because he's working for Packer. It's coming together now. It's the first time since we left New York. I'm starting to feel in control. I told you, if you just listen to me, things would work out. Yeah, whether he's here to get us or not, this guy's a professional killer, okay? And you're getting out of here. All right, all right, okay. We'll just wait a few more minutes. It'll be much easier to slip out among all the other guests. And nobody's going anywhere until they find the lottery ticket. That can be arranged. <laughs> Arranging them. A miracle. Ringraziando il Dio, l'ho trovato, l'ho trovato il biglietto della lotteria. We have a winner. Yeah. He yeah. has found the lottery ticket. That means twenty-five thousand dollars will be donated in his name to the Order of the Good Works. That ticket belongs to me. Usually, doing a situation like this, when you shoot your way out. No reason to panic. So glad you could make it, Mr. Packer. You were almost too late. Is there anything you'd care to say to your guests before I call the police? Ladies and gentlemen, what a surprise! Your friend and ours, Jack Packer, flew in all the way from Chicago to greet the Cardinal. There is something I'd like to say, if you'd all listen up. I wouldn't mention the disappearance of your mistress, Carol Mallory, if I were you. I just wanted to say how thrilled I am to see you all again. I'm only sorry that Mitzi couldn't make the trip here with me. Once again, thank you all for coming. You think we have a lead on who's behind it? Were Matthew Durning's new partners at PSI? I find it odd that Matthew Durning didn't tell me about his new partners. I spoke to him only this morning about the break-in here at my house. That's great. Now what, huh? Huh? What are we gonna do now? This is the worst case of circumstantial nothing I've ever seen. Maybe not. Contact. All right, and Packer are somehow in this together. That's the man that's gonna lead us to Carol Mallory. I want the money by tomorrow. You'll have it. But I don't want you ever coming to this house again. He's leaving. All right, well, I'm on him. You make sure you get out of here. I'll be fine. I have Bailey. I've done... I'll be, I'll be fine.
PSI 5, PSI 5, copy. Yo, Jojo, what's up? Stand by, I've got Danny for you on a mobile phone. On a mobile phone? All right, all right, okay, thank you. What is she doing on the mobile phone? What are you doing? Where are you? Packer left the house, I'm following him. What are you, crazy? I don't want you following anybody anyplace. You're supposed to be in my protective custody. That's why I left New York, to keep you alive. What about keeping Vicky's sister alive? Hey, you're not interested in keeping anything but that $26 million lottery ticket that Packard took off you. Oh, is that right? Well, let me tell you something, Mr. Sleuth. You wouldn't last 10 minutes in my world. The ticket Packer pulled out of my hand was worthless. I only had Widower pretend he found it so we could unload all the guests. It was obvious we weren't going to find the real one. Oh. oh, so the entire evening that you cooked up was absolutely worthless in finding out anything about anything. Wrong again. It found you that nice Mr. Walrod, didn't it? Whose present criminal activity you are now in a position to find out. Unless, of course, you screw up and lose him. Uh-oh. What? I think I lost him. Good, good. Turn around and go back to the trailer. Oh? Oh? Oh, what? I found him again. He's out of his car. Don't you dare follow him. No, I don't think I will. Why not? He's going into a girly joint. So much for undying devotion to our client's sister. Yeah, well, maybe he knows what happened to her and he has to get drunk to live with the memory. You may be right about that. And why are you agreeing with me on something? Because Walrod just pulled into a cemetery. the soonest we might expect your uh, guest tomorrow afternoon ah, good for me I love the muted pastels of an internment at dusk you give me the creeps but you do with work mm -hmm. return business must be earned Mention it. It has to be Cody. on earth hey, would hey, you hey. come sneaking in your own window? Oh, because Mr. Packer's two million dollar Mercedes-Benz is parked out front, and I couldn't think of one reason why that wouldn't mean trouble. I borrowed it. As with Mr. Packer's permission? Not exactly. 
I needed it. I put you both through enough for one day. I'm going to call a cab. Hey, what are you talking about? You're not going anywhere. No. You're on safety. No, I don't want to intrude anymore on your personal lives. Our personal lives? You certainly don't have room in this little trailer for me. Oh, Cody can sleep on the sofa. Oh, no. My parents brought me up to believe that the marriage bed is the foundation of a lasting union. Could be the end of this one. Besides, you know, you can't go home anyway with this wall rod on the loose. Cody is right. We will not hear of you leaving tonight. Okay, but, um... I sleep on the couch, and I assure you that once I'm out, nothing can wake me. By a body? It's an old mob trick. It's called a double header. You lost me. Well, somebody wants to get rid of a body, so they buy into a funeral. Unclaimed body. And when they're ready, they bury two bodies in one coffin. Oh. <gasps> Carol? Hey, we can't be sure that it's intended for her. Well, at least we know she isn't dead yet. How? How? Well, if Carol were already dead, Walrod wouldn't waste a trip to the cemetery with an empty trunk. Hey, how do you always manage to stay so damn optimistic? Well, my father used to always tell me, every dark cloud has its silver lining. Well, he used to tell me that things always look darkest just before they go completely black. Oh. Hello? Darling. How's the weather in California, dear? Well, it's beautiful, just perfect. How are you, darling? Missing you. Will you be home soon? I just have to clean up one more loose end, and I'm on my way. Hello? Have you got the money? Yes. Uh, look, I've been thinking about this. What guarantee do I have that you're working for Carol Mallory? That when I pay you this money, she'll get off my back and let me cash the ticket. I'm the only one who knows enough about you and Carol to make a deal. I just can't believe that she'd be this cold and calculating about it. Cold and calculating. Why, do you think you have a corner in the market? Just skip the insults. I have your money just the way you want it. We can't meet now. Someone's watching my house. The same couple who was there last night? I think so. They seem to have taken an interest in Carol Mallory's sister. Then you must let him follow you. Lead him to me now, right away. Why? That should be obvious. I'm going to kill them. Oh, my God. Don't tell me that. This is getting worse and worse. <laughs> Listen, whatever you're going to do to them, I don't want to be there. I don't want to see it. I don't want to know anything about it. Do you understand me? No, the whole point is to keep you above it all, Mr. Packer. And I know the place to do just that. Nice early start. Nice size briefcase. <laughs> What's a nice size? Too small for a body. Plenty big enough for a lot of money.
What's going to happen? I thought you said you didn't want to know. I don't, but I'm up here too. They won't be in the same car with you. You're going to set off a bomb, aren't you? Walk up to the observation point. Place the briefcase in the trash container. I wouldn't get to know what's in that briefcase. Come on. Why don't you stay here? You just said, come on. Now I'm telling you to stay here. But I want But nothing. You stay here, OK? Now, obviously, he's here to deliver the contents of that package to somebody. I'm going to follow whoever that is. And you follow Packer if he comes back first. Hello. Uh, no. No, I've got all kinds of friends up here. They're all over the place. You get a much better view from the point up those steps. Goodbye. What's gonna happen? The bomb will explode when their tramp reaches 4,000 feet. they go through all that trouble and then leave a hundred thousand dollars behind they wouldn't nobody in their right mind would. that's right and neither would we see that's it that's got to be it i mean they knew that we were going to bring this case down but how does it go off Shh, i don't know pressure cap maybe we get below a certain level this thing's gonna blow no we get to what?
I was hoping not to have to embarrass you in front of Miss Mallory here. But you leave me no choice. I got the whole story from Packer. It seems that Miss Mallory's sister hired Walrod to carry a blackmail message in it. She promised not to ruin his marriage if he paid her $100,000 a year for 10 years. That's a lie. Carol wouldn't do something like that. It's Jack she wants, not the money. We believe you, Vicky. Yeah, because Packer's story doesn't make any sense. An innocent man isn't going to participate in trying to kill us with a bomb. Packer knew nothing about the bomb. Th that was Walrod's attempt to get rid of two witnesses to her sister's blackmail scheme. Then how do you explain Walrod buying a body at the cemetery? How do we know he bought it? Can we prove he bought a body? All we've got is Mr. Powell's somewhat suspect powers of observation that that ever happened. Look, I'll make you a deal, Darren. You're in no position to make a deal. One of us is right. Now, if it's you, our heads roll. If it's us, then you can lose your business for aiding and abetting a conspiracy to commit murder. Now, isn't that worth a trip to the mortuary? goes into this hole, man. Here, I'll take the responsibility, please. Open the box. This has to be the most disgusting thing I've ever been a part of. Uh-huh. <laughs> Just as I thought. Okay, close it up. Oh, wait. This is the body that Walrod bought. We've got to lift it up and look underneath. Did you lift it up? Cody, this is also ridiculous. I can't believe I got talked into this. Fellas, just close it up. All right, just hold it. Cody! Lift it up, please. What the hell are you doing? Lift up the body. These guys could be in on it. Lift up the cushion. It's not a winning ticket. There's got to be a mistake. This ticket... ...is not the winning ticket. Okay, we got him. Nice and neat. All right, you guys get back to the office. I'll deal with you later. Hey, this is a big mistake, Dirty. The mistake was yours, Cody. You backed the wrong horse. She didn't do it. Then who did? I don't know who did it, but... But Walrod is a pro, and you're not going to get a damn thing out of him. Yeah, well, now there's been a murder. Now it's police business. Hey, Carol Mallory's got to be guilty after all. Cody, judging people is how I make my living. Carol Mallory is no more guilty than I am. Well, having committed my future to that premise, I think I'll just suck on a police special. Someone else has got to be behind Walrod. I hate to admit it, but that makes sense. But who? Who is it we're forgetting about in all this? Busy, haven't we? Oh. Looks like the men who does your dirty work has run out on you, doesn't it, Mitzi? Oh, Mr. Walrod will be back here to kill you, dear. You needn't worry, because if he doesn't, I will. If he does, he's gonna kill both of us. Possibly so. And I'll let him kill you. And then I'll be ready for him when he comes to me. After you make sure he has the lottery ticket. Dear girl, you're learning to think, aren't you? Such a shame that it's too late. Mr. Walrod called to tell me that he's already killed my loving husband. <laughs> and he wouldn't have done that unless he already had the ticket in his possession. Please, I don't care about the money. I don't want anything to do with it now that Pack is dead. Please! Oh, you should have thought of that before you 
you started sleeping with a married man, my dear. It had to turn out badly for somebody. If we're right, and if Carol Mallory isn't behind Walrod, then there's only one person who can tell us who that person is. Walrod himself. Yeah, but I keep saying, Walrod is a professional killer. Professional killers don't talk. Yeah, well, maybe they're just not used to coming up against me. Yeah, right. I can see him shaking in his boots right now. You willing to give me a shot at him? My methods? Yeah, you do what you want anyway. around and get us down to the ground. You just sit down, Mr. Professional Killer. You want out of here? All you gotta do is tell us who you're working for and where we can find Carol Mallory. Hey, you know English, I hablo español. You can play all the games you want. If you're a pro, you know I ain't gonna talk. If you're not, you're in over your head, buddy. Speaking of pros, I think you could use a little professional help. What the hell is he doing here, Danny? I swear I didn't tell him. Well, you know me, Wanda. I have this thing about seeing someone else with my lady. Don't you please? Not now. We are doing something important. And you're gonna let this clown help you? Get in the hell out of here. Get in the hell out of here now. Get going. Don't you please trust me. I'll make it up to you. We're just trying to get some information out of this guy. And you think he can do it better than I can? We were a team. We can be a team. Again, just don't get in the middle of this. Dodge, please. That's it. I got no more time to waste. Come on, all right. Please, Dodger, trust me. I will make this up to you later. What the hell are you doing? Right, cover him, Danny. What the hell are you doing? Thank you. Your last chance, all right. Now, where can I find Carol Mallory? Did she hire you to work for her? I don't buy it. You're not gonna do it. Well, let me tell you a crack out of it. Damn it, 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 damn Free? All right! All right! All right! All right, she hired me so I could set up back her! He's lying! I don't believe Carol Mallory hired me! Oh, no! 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 Please! No, oh, for God's sake! I didn't say that Carol Mallory hired me! You said she! What? His wife hired me! Mrs. Backer! Packer's wife is in Chicago! No, oh, she's in the spring! She's been here for two days! And Carol Mallory's with her? Yes, in the ranch house! At the end of the canyon road! Are we through here? Almost. He's garbage. Dump him. No! Ah! No! No! no!
Hey, thanks for your help, Dodger. Yeah, well, I didn't do it for you. Hey, you were good, Walrat. Right? What in the hell do you think you're doing? Oh, my goodness, what luck. I didn't see a car. I was afraid no one was home. <sighs> Hot out here, isn't it? I repeat. Oh, hell? I'm Wanda Selleck, White Sands Realty. You know, the actor? It's my cousin. You see the resemblance? Well, it's taller, of course. We're making up a new listing sheet on the house. I'm here to check the specifications. I wonder if we might go inside. No. My mother's very ill. The least little thing disturbs her. Oh, I wouldn't disturb She'd her. She'd find you very disturbing. No offense. Now, if you wouldn't mind backing your car out, I'm expecting the doctor. Oh, but what luck. I am a registered nurse. No, I'm sorry. I really must insist. Oh, it is lovely. Much nicer than they told me. Do you mind if I send a photographer out here to get some new shots? I asked you to leave. If I have to say it again, I'm going to call the police. I'll come back at a more convenient time. I can see myself out. No, it'll be my pleasure. And may I say, I do understand why you want to take such good care of your dear mother. She is very beautiful. Yes, that I understand. Walrod was working for Mrs. Packer. He was supposed to kill Packer, frame Carol, and make it look like she committed suicide out of remorse. I got that. But not before he found the lottery ticket so that Mrs. Packer could cash it and get all the money. But then he goes into business for himself, and he blackmails Mr. Packer before he kills him. So, where's the ticket? Maybe you never made it out of the grocery bag from the mini market where they bought it. Maybe you got tossed by a maid. I'm not sure we'll ever know. Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait a minute. Are you telling me that a $26 million ticket has vanished? No one knows where it is? I'm afraid that's it. Do you believe her? Well, your lie detector did. Yeah, well, I got news for you. Polygraphs can be fooled by pathological liars. Hey, a bet's a bet. All right. Okay, the two of you can stay in the Packer house. But only until it's sold. Don't... And Packer's secretary said the plants have to be watered twice a week. Faithfully. Cody, before you go, it's just hard to um, express how I feel about... You don't you know, have to say anything. Well, you don't have to say anything. What's that all about? What was what all about? All that kissing and hugging. Oh, what are you talking about? She was thanking me. How do you think that looks? How what looks? You kissing another woman. You are my husband. Come on, it was just a harmless oh, little thing. Oh, don't give me just you. a harmless little. No husband of mine is going to make a fool of me in public. <laughs> all right. All right. All right, I'll make it up to you, okay? 
know, give me a couple hours to think about it, and uh, I'll meet you back at our new house. Ah! You think you can flaunt another woman and then just buy me off so easily? Do I get a hint? No. Why don't you come on the road with me? I can't dodge. A married woman? Sort of. And there's a lot I can't talk about. I've got something that's hard to talk about, too. Maybe some other time, when things are less complicated. It's about the lottery ticket. The lottery ticket? I found it. You found it? It was in the dining room under the tablecloth. I was mad at you for being married. Really mad. So I decided not to tell anyone about it. Do you have it? No. Your husband kept giving me the evil eye each time he saw me, and I didn't want to have to fight him for it when I left, so I hid it. Where? In the one place I knew it would be perfectly safe in, Palm Springs. <laughs> Reacting to the beautiful aroma of my mother's recipe for pierogies. No! No! Oh, hey, you don't like it, I'll whip you up something else. Please rewind this cassette before returning it to your video library. <laughs> 